Okay, so welcome to the Honey and Coffee podcast.、Uh, this episode's title is going to be Inclusivity in Writing or Inclusiveness,、uh, Inclusiveness in Writing. That's the theme for this podcast. And today I'm a new co-host for the podcast. My name is Casey, and of course we have a seasoned co-host here with Bubbles.、Um, so we're going to be, yeah, <laughs> I Bubbles. So. We're going to be the main host this time, and the podcast going forward, we'll be releasing episodes together、uh, on a, probably the one to two month basis.、Um, the status quo of clean inclusivity、uh, in writing com- in the writing community, and we're also going to be covering as well on the queer themes and the dra- and the genres that could be perhaps more normalized per se. And then we also want to take a look at what the ideal future looks like for inclusiveness in the writing community. So I think without with that being said, we can get started. So to begin with, in the writing community, we often see the theme of queerness in general as being more or less objectified. We see this a lot in the anime community, especially with the yuri and the yaoi genres, where a lot of the time they're a bit、uh, fetishized, even. And so, in the Western sphere, we have the kind of the opposite, where they kind of tokenize and use in a way to kind of push forward a message. And so. Definitely, probably the first way to address it is just going to address the status quo, where we should aim to sort of normalize these experiences, not to make them into these sort of pedestals that we just cut or like just these tokens we simply add into stories, just so that we can definitely say, yeah, we ticked the box off the check mark, and that's perfectly fine. We can move on. What do you think, Casey? I think that's definitely true, and I've seen a lot of stories, not just obviously on Honeyfeed, but in general in the writing community across multiple different platforms. People are checking off that check mark to say, like, yeah, we have demonstrated inclusiveness just to show that kind of you know we include that queer character or、uh, a character from LGBTQ community or something else similar to that, right? And I feel that people definitely sh- that's obviously going into the side and to the spectrum of fetishizing, and I feel like we should at least. Do a little bit more, right?、Uh, in, including actually trying to show more concepts of inclusiveness, and probably explore the whole genre by itself a little bit more, and try to integrate that as part of the story a little bit more, so that it actually sounds more normal and it's more normalized rather than it sounds like there's a specific characters or genres that are being fetishized or targeted. Yeah, the I think probably the most issue, the issue I take at least for the most part, is that all the time you have. All、the representation coming up as a sort of like in the center, in the spotlight thing we have was definitely a good thing that we bring queer stories told by queer people in the spotlight. But that should not be the end all and be all because ultimately, if you only put a spotlight on it, that's not a normalization. It's kind of like you tell that story; it it looks like it's something special, which. In all fairness, it's not. It's something very widespread, and so putting it in this sort of、uh, light, it just makes it othering in some way. And so, probably the best way to have the normalization of it is to, up, 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 apart from obviously, just keep churning out these stories because、like, they need to be told. They, you need to be made aware of their experiences. Another thing that you should do is like kind of allow yourself to just put them in and not draw attention to the. The, the queerness of them all, like you have people in、uh, very like straight sort of romance, or like have a gay couple in the background. They they sort of exist. Nobody comments on them. They just kind of like, oh, I like a guy, I like a girl, and obviously you've got to be a boy or girl. And you would have this sort of thing be simply included and normalized by virtue of the characters already acknowledging it's normal in a way. I think that would be probably one of the easiest and most Probably effective things you could do just to actually push forward the idea of queerness to be normalized. I think one of the current issues, at least persistent right now, is that the status quo seems to be those, you know, those gay couples in the background, those queer couples in the background, or if there is just the genre introduced by itself. That by itself is not normalized. People will still comment on it. People will still say in the comments、uh, of the story, like, "Oh, I I really like how you include this gay couple in the background." Blah blah blah. Or hey, like, hey, the can we also include this?、Uh, the can we also make this a inclusiveness related theme attached or tagged to the story? And in fact, by like, I don't think it should be a theme or a genre. Or, like, it should be that type of thing. I think it itself should be. 
as just part of like a normal writing sense. I think it should just be part of uh, writing in general where people don't have to target those specific things in comment just to make sure that it's included, right? I think it should just be naturally in a sense that people just see it like, like you said, you include it in the story, people feel like it's natural, they don't have to comment on it all the time, they don't have to say, hey, like we can tag this as um, Yuri or Yaoi or anything like that, because we don't ne necessarily need to do that, unless obviously you know, you, s like, you go into like the realms of those genres, but uh, in general, I feel like that's at least the kind of issue I've seen from the stories I've seen. Yeah, definitely. If you signpost it, you kind of bring attention to it, and ultimately, you have people like Morgan Freeman who spoke about how to solve racism, and he made a very salient point saying, don't talk about it. The more you bring attention to the issue of divisiveness, of the, fet of the fetishization, and every other issue in a community, the more you help to silently perpetuate it. Definitely, it helps, but at the same time, continuously drilling it over and over again can have an adverse effect. And at the end of the day, when you're writing something, you are well accustomed to the accoutrement of storytelling. You know the effect of words better than anybody. And so you should aim to al allow yourself the sort of um, thought process. Like, is this something I w need to write? Like, explicitly, the Yahweh tag. I need to draw attention to the gay people in the foreground and bring them from the background in. And at the end of the day, most of the time, the answer is no, they should be allowed to be gay as normal as people are allowed to be straight. You should never obsequiously draw attention to the fact that they're queer, they're trans, they're gay, they're whatever. Because that always serves to invite a lot of noxious discourse. This is not to say that you shouldn't you shouldn't be putting a spot on them from now and again, or even in the in the story in itself, but it's also something to be done with moderation, because you always have to think about the reverse of it. Because ultimately, if you tell a story that is just a gay story, well, you have to we have to wonder what if it was just a what if it was a straight story you always can make the sort of reverse test because you have that sort of um the Bechdel test for like how women should be written you can also have a queer test is this something that if we reverse the gender if we reverse a orientation is this becoming okay is it going to be as we're regarded and a lot of the time novels fail that test and it's very saddening because you realize that well straight people don't talk about being oppressed as straight people and so when you to, to attempt to normalize that that's what behavior when, when you don't worry that oh I, I I love this person I'm gonna be chastised for it you simply don't talk about being chastised you talk about the beauty of it the which of which there is plenty. You talk about the natural aspect of it, which of which again there is plenty. You should aim to look at the positives a lot of the time because there is a lot of positivity to be gained from talking about the gay people and queer people in general as being normal and included and in there as opposed to being always at the fringe of society kind of trying struggling to get by. Once more, not saying these issues are something that we should ignore, but sometimes it helps to bring attention to the light of it all as opposed to just the overbearing darkness. Right, and I think both the readers and the writers bear equal responsibility here, at least from my point of view, because from a writer point of view, you have to demonstrate and lead by example, right, by showcasing characters that could be part of any sort of sexuality, characters that could be part of any race, characters that could be part of any sort of community that could be um, targeted or are part of a minority, right? And then you have to make it sound natural, you have to make it f as if the readers would not even take notice, or at least you have to make it as if it's their integrated part of the story and they're not the ones being fetishized, or at least it's very normalized in a sense. And from a reader's perspective, you have to accept that. Uh, you have to kind of read the story, go through all the details, and not comment and think to yourself like, wow, this is this story is about this or that. Like, it's not about that. It's just about a normal story that has, you know, characters on all sides of the spectrum and it doesn't necessarily matter. And I feel that from both sides, we're not necessarily there yet in terms of reaching our full potential inclusiveness. I feel that there's still a lot to do in the whole community. And what do you think, Bubbles? 
Yeah, definitely. I think we should genuinely try to uh, establish some sort of new normal because ultimately we are in a bit of a, um, let's say, murky period of time. Like, we are still treading the waters. We don't know exactly how this should be tackled because it's such a new thing, even though it's kind of a decades old. The issue of romance and like this sort of orientation has been a centuries, a millennia old problem, even. And so it's definitely a learning experience. But I think that moving forward, I, the best way to do it is just as we've already kind of touched upon a lot in the podcast is that you should aim to not make the gay stories gay by sort of design like a, a story can be inclusive by simply putting gay characters in situations that everybody else can be put in or trans or gender fluid or whatever you want to whatever you want to explore they do not need to be do not be to put in experiences specifically tailored to them and put them at the center of the story for the character to be included. That only serves to draw users' attention. They because ultimately they are people and they can exist as people. And so I think we should definitely try to dial down on this, where we put people, where we show gay people as people before they're gay. You know, it's probably a very, very obvious comment to make, but I think it genuinely would help a lot if we can think of them as just a lot more a part of the status quo, even, as opposed to, again, this sort of marginal group that kind of exists there and needs to be specifically included. Right, and I don't think I could have been able to put it any better way. Uh, And I think, honestly, that should definitely be the takeaway for the podcast, too, because ultimately... Um, you know, as readers and as writers, we bear the responsibility to kind of lead by example and everyone listening to this podcast should definitely try to consider that in their writing. And I think we're at time today. So thank you so much for listening to our inclusiveness podcast today for our, this episode. And for next episode, we're going to be talking about writing and productivity and writing. So um, please do be excited to listen in for that next episode. And until then, um, uh, it, my name was Casey again, and you'll be hearing me in the future as a co-host, and of course you'll have bubbles again. Thanks a lot, and don't forget to follow and leave comments. Bye!